look at another example of this problem. And what we're actually going to do is take this 0.9 molar solution and I'm going to pour it into this beaker right here. 0 0.90 molar solution. This becomes my new stock solution. Now in this problem, I'm starting with 0.9 molar and I want to make, do you see it right up there? I want to make 0.7 molar. I'm going to switch to a different color here. You see that what I want to make is 0.7 molar solution of red dye number 40. That's what I want to have here in the volumetric flask at the end of this problem, 0.7 molar. So remember, I'm going to use this equation. The molarity that we start with times the volume that we start with is going to equal the molarity that we end with times the volume that we end with. And we know this molarity and volume. We know the molarity that we want in this flask right down here. We know that that molarity is 0 0.70 molar. And we know the volume of that flask is 250 milliliters. And I know the molarity of this beginning solution is 0 0.90 molar. And I need to solve for V1. So V1 equals 0 0.70 molar times 250 milliliters divided by 0 0.90 milliliters. So I get out my calculator and calculate V1. And I get 194.44. So using as much uh, the most precise instruments um, that I can and s uh, remembering that if I s have to make multiple, multiple, multiple measurements, my errors may add up and um, I might run out of time. So somehow I decide I'm going to measure out 194 milliliters, 194 milliliters, oops, probably want to, want to be a little more precise than that, 194.44 milliliters. I add that to this container. And then how much water do I add? Well, I simply add enough water to bring my final volume up to the calibration line on the 250 milliliter volumetric flask. And what do I have? I have 0 0.07 molar solution. Now let's look at one more example. And in this one more example, I'm going to take this solution and I'm going to pour it into this beaker. And so I have here a 0 0.7 molar solution in this beaker. Oops. 0 0.70 molar. And I know that I want to make 0.5 molar solution. That's what my next direction says. 0.5 molar, 0.5 moles per liter solution of red dye number 40. And I'm going to use this dilution equation concentration times the volume equals uh, the concentration at the end times the volume at the end. And I know this is 0 0.5 and this is 250 milliliters and this is 0.7 and I want to solve for V1. So V1 equals, get out my calculator, 
and I get 178.57. I put 178.57 milliliters in my 250 milliliter volumetric flask. And how much water do I add? Enough water to bring the water, the, the solution level up to the 250 milliliter line and I have 250 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution. Yay! So another piece of background you need to know is the precision of the instruments that are available. This instrument, the beaker, is going to be your least accurate measurement. You can usually only measure maybe the closest 25 milliliters with this device. So, you know, at least plus or minus 20 milliliters, something like that. Big errors can result in using this for measurement. The volumetric flask. The volumetric flask is usually something like plus or minus about 0.05% of whatever the volume is. So fairly precise. Now the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder is measured to the closest plus or minus 0.1 milliliter and the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder measures plus or minus 0.01 milliliter if you're careful enough. Now this next instrument laying right over here on its side is called a serological pipette. Now there are several kinds of these pipettes, as we may look at in another part of the video, and uh, they usually measure plus or minus 0 0.001 if you use them carefully and remember that this last digit, in all of these cases, the last digit is an estimate. And this device here is sometimes called a pipette helper or a pipette bulb and it is used because uh, we're going to be reducing the pressure and pulling the solution up into this kind of like you would pull a solution into a straw but we don't want to put our mouths on this because sometimes you might be pipetting toxic materials toxic solutions and so we don't want to put our mouths on the pipette and the pipette helper helps deal with that. And you'll see three valves on the pipette helper. We'll have to look at that more closely in another video. As you work on making solutions of specific concentrations, you're going to want to focus a little bit on which instruments you have for making measurements, how they work, how precise they are, and how accurate you think you can be as you make these measurements piece of glassware we're looking at is a volumetric flask. You remember maybe that a volumetric flask measures one specific volume and usually it measures that volume to within a uh, hundredth, one hundredth of one percent. Now notice I'm adding water to get enough of the solution to come to the bottom so the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, comes to the white line that is on my volumetric flask. And so this will give you a very accurate measurement as long as you're wanting to make a specific volume of some solution. The 100 milliliter graduated cylinder gives us a great deal more flexibility in the volume we want to measure, but the precision of this instrument is only to the closest tenth of a milliliter. So it's true that you can easily adjust the volume, but you can only read this to the closest tenth of a milliliter. The 10 milliliter graduated cylinder will give you a great deal more precision uh, so that you may get a more accurate results. And this, you should be able to read the volume change of one drop 
added to a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. And once again, be sure you read this at eye level and read from the bottom of that curved meniscus. There are several types of serological pipettes that you may use in your chemistry labs. This is the type you will be using. It is called a blowout pipette and uh, it is a, identified as a blowout pipette by the two rings right here around the stem of the pipette. Now just to compare that, here's a pipette known as a drop out pipette or dropping pipette. Um, and there's no, there are no rings around the stem. Now what this means is this pipette is calibrated so that if you fill it up to this line that's marked with a zero and you let the liquid drain out of it by gravity, the a little bit of liquid that's left when it finishes draining is not part of what you want to measure and so you leave that remaining in the container now in the pipette the type of the the type of pipette that you'll be using is a blowout pipette it measures volumes very nicely of 10 milliliters. It's called a 10 milliliter pipette. You'll see that it actually holds a little bit more than that. You'll see some marks on up above the zero mark. So this is designed that if you fill this to the zero mark and let it drain to here, that is one milliliter that you've delivered. If you let it drain to here, you will deliver two milliliters, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and to get 10 milliliters out of this you have to blow using the a, a pipette helper of some kind blow the rest of that out of the bottom of the pipette now the pipette helper that you'll have looks like this and it attaches on to the pipette by friction and uh, has three valves those valves are labeled, let's see, can we see them there in the video? This is labeled S, E, and A. There's A. Now the way this works is just like a bulb syringe, only it has valves in it that allow you to a lot more control. So to squeeze the bulb shut, I'm going to let air out through valve A by squeezing there. Now. If I want to bring liquid into this pipette, I can place the pipette down into the liquid like this, and I can depress valve S. I can squeeze that, and it will slowly bring liquid. I can control the speed that that's pulling the liquid up by squeezing and releasing I can get the desired amount of liquid into this pipette. And the E valve is for empty. And so I can empty this by pushing the E valve and letting it empty. And since this is a pipette that says I need that, it's a blowout pipette, I need that at the end. I'm not going to just let it drain and stop right there. I'm going to hold the E valve and give this just a little squeeze. You will be using a colorimeter, something like this one, to determine the concentration of each of your solutions. Now briefly, a colorimeter simply compares the amount of light absorbed by distilled water to the amount of light absorbed by whatever your sample is. And if you have a series of known concentrations with different absorbencies, different amounts of light absorbed by the different concentrations, you can then determine the concentration of any solution simply by taking a small amount of the solution to be tested 
it only takes a couple of milliliters and placing it into one of these cuvettes. Now it's very important that the cuvettes be clean because anything that disrupts the flow of light through these two sides of the uh, cuvette are going to read as a difference in concentration. So we need to make sure there aren't any fingerprints and we need to make sure that the cuvette is dry and we've cleaned off these two surfaces of the cuvette that are going to have light pass through them. We place, um, if you see the arrow right down here, that's where the light is going to pass through. We're going to put the cuvette sample to be tested into the colorimeter like this. However, before we put that sample in to test it, we need to zero the cuvette using distilled water. And so we're placing a sample of water here. And um, when this colorimeter is hooked to the computer and we've chosen the appropriate wavelength, we press calibrate and the lights blink for a moment. When they stop blinking, the system is calibrated. We can now remove the distilled water from the cuvette and replace it with the sample that we want to find the absorbency of. So we close the cuvette and the absorbency, or excuse me, we close the colorimeter and the absorbency automatically displays on the computer. Now there are other details of running that software but that's a place for another video. So now based on the absorbency of this sample in the colorimeter we can tell something about its concentration if we are using the same system of colored chemicals. So we can compare the concentration of this chemical with say the concentration of this chemical that we have this sample in this beaker or this chemical because you will see if we place these two side by side they obviously are not the same concentration and we can determine their concentration by shining the light through them and determining how much light is absorbed. The lower the concentration, the less light will be absorbed. What do you need to do now? You need to decide how you are going to make the four solutions. Calculate how much of the stock solution you are going to need to make, make the next solution. Be ready to make those solutions next time class meets. So right now, you're going to want to decide, how do I calculate how to make from a one molar solution, how do I make a 0.65 molar solution? And then also, how do I go on to make a 0.55 molar solution, a 0.45 molar solution, and a 0.35 molar solution. Good luck with those calculations.